Friends, will you please join me now for a moment of prayer. Most gracious, most loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for calling us to gather here in this place as this community of faith. And we give you thanks above all for your presence that is always here with us. Open us to that presence. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our minds, that we might be filled with your unconditional love. That as we live our lives each and every moment, we might do so, sharing that love everywhere that we go. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody in here familiar with the story that Brent read for us today? That, yeah, the calling of the, the first disciples? We probably learned that. Many of you may have learned that when you were just very small children. I remember we learned this song even. That went, I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. You know that song? I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. That, that song? Yeah, it's, it's one of those stories that is ingrained in us, many of us. Not all of us grew up in the church, and that's okay, too. But for a lot of us, for me, this is a story that I learned when I was, when I was a tiny child. When I was just, when I was little and I was growing up, and I thought, well, I guess that means I'm supposed to be a fisher, a fisher of people. Jesus called these, these four guys... And said that they were supposed to be fishing for people. So if I'm going to follow Jesus, I guess that means I need to be a fisher of people too. Well, the thing is, I'm not a very good fisher person. When I was younger, I used to go camping uh, with, my, with my dad or with uh, my grandma on, on my dad's side. My grandma was quite the fisherwoman. She would uh, go out to Moorhead Park. It's uh, this, this park out, outside of Ida Grove, Iowa, nor in the northwest part of the state. And she would set up at least five fishing rods. And she, she'd cast them out. Put them in, you know, she'd go and find little sticks so that they would hold themselves up. And she would fish. And she loved doing this. I was a little different. <laughs> I remember uh, one, one fishing instance in particular. My dad took uh, my sisters, some of my sisters, I think uh, my two younger sisters and me out camping at the same park, Moorhead Park. And it was evening, it had become dark, and he said, hey, do you all wanna go out fishing? Well, yeah, sure, what else are you gonna do? It's dark. There, we didn't have electronics back in that day, uh, or not so many electronics. So we went out onto the dock, and I didn't even really know how to cast my line. Uh, I wasn't very skilled. You know, I think some of the, the kids back there were saying, oh yeah, I learned how. Lauren probably knows how to cast a line better than I do, even to this day. But so we, uh, my, my line was cast, I think, like I said, my dad probably did it. And I sat there in my, in my chair, holding the reel, holding my fishing pole. And I just thought, this is the most boring thing I've ever done. Sitting there in the dark, I closed my eyes and was really kind of falling asleep. Then all of a sudden, I felt something on my line. And it was exciting. And I started reeling it in. And then, of course, I had to give it to my dad to help me reel it in the, the rest of the way. I was not gifted with the ability to fish. I just wasn't. And I don't think that's really what this text is about, that all of us must be fishers for people. James, John, Peter, Simon, uh, probably still at this time, maybe Jesus hadn't, re we hadn't gotten his renamed yet, and his brother Andrew, they had gifts for fishing. Some of you probably have gifts for fishing. One of the things I, I think that, that comes uh, with a gift for fishing, a, what you need to have in order to be a good fisher person, you need to have patience. I clearly didn't have any patience 
when I was a child out there on that dock. And I probably wouldn't have any patience for catching fish today either. Right? It requires patience. You put the bait out there, you cast your net, and you wait. And you wait, and you wait some more. And maybe you'll get a tug on your line. Eventually you'll bring the net in and you hope that there is something in there. To have the gift of being a fisher, you have the gift of patience. But that's not all I think it takes to be a good fisher person. I think my, my grandma, she knew. She knew where to go fishing. You don't just throw a line into any puddle of water, right? Fish don't live in every, in every body of water ready to be caught. But she knew the environment. And she knew what the fish wanted. I don't even remember if we just used worms or if we used, I think my grandma sometimes used the liver or something like that. Anybody who's ever been fishing, does that sound like something you might actually use to catch fish? Okay, seeing some nods out there, I haven't lost it. But you need to know what kind of fish you're going for, right? Because they are attracted to different things. I also remember one of my uncles, he was a big uh, fisher person. He had a, a fishing box and had different bobbers and lures and things like that. He knew which ones, which fish would be attracted to. So you know your environment and you know your audience. You know your fish. So if you have the gift of fishing, you have the gift of observation, of understanding your environment. A gift for understanding what your targeted audience wants, what they need, what they are drawn to, what will lure them in. I think if you are a fisher person, you also need to be persistent. Because you don't always catch a bunch, do you? Sometimes you catch little tiny fish, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. You're always waiting for that big catch, the big fish that you can be proud to take the, the picture with. Nobody gets excited on, on a, a couple-inch fish to take their picture. Jeez, you know, like, right? You don't see those posted up on, on Facebook or, or anything like that. People want to, want to show you their abilities. They show you the big fish. But the big fish don't always come. Right? It takes persistence, perseverance. You got to keep going back. If you have the gift of fishing, you have the gift of perseverance. That's what I see as a non-gifted <laughs> as a non-fisher, as someone who's not gifted in such a way. But as I think about the various gifts that are involved with fishing, it makes complete sense to me that when Jesus is calling these first four people, he's telling them, I will help you, I will teach you to fish for people. That makes sense to them. They have gifts to bring people in. They have patience. It, take, it takes patience to gather a group of people. It takes perseverance because you don't always get them. How many of you have invited people probably to come to church and they don't come and they won't come and finally maybe one day, there they are sitting next to you in the pew. You gotta persevere to persist. And it takes knowing your environment, knowing the people. What's actually going to catch them? What will inspire them? What will lure them into becoming part of, of this great thing that God is doing? These are wonderful gifts for ministry, but they are not the only gifts for ministry. Because like I told you, I am not gifted to be a fisher person. That, those are not where my gifts lie. And when I, when I hear Jesus calling 
These folks, I don't hear him saying, everybody, if anybody wants to follow me, you got to learn how to fish for people. I'm going to teach you how to fish for people. I think Jesus knew who these guys were. If he didn't, I think the nets that they were throwing out would have given him some sort of a clue. These were fishers. He knew their gifts. He knew their gifts, and as he invited them into a new way of life, he invited them to use the gifts they already possess to help share God's love with all of God's people. He invited them to use their gifts to help bring about God's realm, God's realm of wholeness, of healing, of justice, of peace, used the gifts they already had. Friends, some of you may be gifted fisher people. Therefore, you may be used, you may be called to use those gifts to help bring about God's realm of love, justice, and peace. I am not called to be a fisher of people in that way. I have different gifts. Uh, as a part of this Next Generation Leadership Initiative, of which I'm a part, this continuing education thing that <coughs> takes me away to Arizona every January. I know it's a, it's a rough life. But at our, our first time together, we had to take a, a strengths finder assessment to try to see what we are already good at. What are our strengths? What are our gifts? Some of my gifts were the gifts of learning. I love to learn. I love to read new things. I love to discover. Another gift that I have is work for connecting. I see connections in, in different sorts of things, which I think is a great gift for ministry, myself. As I hear you all share various stories, there are scriptures that come to my mind that connect with things you are experiencing. And I hope and I try to share those things with you all. Another gift that I have is for including. I have the ability, the gift to, to welcome people no matter who you are. You know, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter what you look like, no matter what interests you have, I want you to be involved. And I do my best to show you that you matter that you are important. Those are a few of my gifts. A few of my gifts that I use, that I am called to use for ministry, to help bring about God's realm, to help bring about healing, to help bring about wholeness, justice, peace, to share love. Friends, I don't think we are all called to fish. But I do think, I do believe that we are all gifted, uniquely gifted for ministry. And you might think, uh, I don't know, just not me. I, I don't know, I don't know about this whole ministry thing. Maybe I have some things I'm kind of okay at or pretty good at. Like I said to the kids, it can be hard for us, right? It can be hard to own our gifts. Because people might think that you are boasting, that you're bragging, that you're being arrogant. I'm not asking you to be arrogant. I'm asking you to be honest with yourselves. Friends, you have been gifted by God. I'm inviting you to see that, to see in yourselves those great gifts, those gifts that you are called to use to help bring God's realm into being here and now. That doesn't mean you have to leave your boat behind. 
necessarily, or leave your nets there. You know how, how they all, they left. James and John, they left their dad in the boat. We're gone. See you later. But I believe you can use those gifts right where you are, and you already are doing it. I'm inviting you, I'm encouraging you, I'm challenging you to see, to open your eyes. How are you already using your gifts to share God's love, to spread God's justice, to bring God's peace, to bring hope and joy into this world? My other grandma, she has a gift of cooking, baking. And I remember regularly, she would bake cookies, she would bake cinnamon rolls, take them to the neighbors, take them down to the, the gas station where she'd have her car worked on, take them out to the mailman. That was a gift she had in a way that she used that for ministry. My grandma's also a knitter, a crocheter. She likes keeping her hands busy. And she, I don't know how many hats she's made. And then donated to a hospital for people who are going through treatment for cancer and losing their hair. This is a gift she has. And a way I see her using it for ministry. Friends, we don't all have to come stand up here in the chancel and preach to be ministers. You all are God's gifted ones. God's beautiful, beloved, gifted ones. And each and every one of you is called to see those gifts, to use those gifts to bring about God's love, God's justice, God's peace, God's realm into this world. How are you doing that? And how is God calling you to follow more closely in that way? Friends, I invite you to a moment of quiet, to a moment of contemplation, to a moment of reflection. See those gifts. Or ask God to help, help you to see those gifts. See the ways you are already acting. You are already involved in ministry. And where God is calling you to go now and next. Let us be together in a time of quiet. Let us be together in a moment of pause.